You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to be building an electromagnetic levitator. Now, before we get started, I have received another letter. And so this letter actually comes from the island of Malta. And anyways, it's sent from someone named Darren. And from the looks of it, he has his own YouTube channel called Darren DIY. And so if you guys want to check out his channel, I'll have that linked in the description. But anyways, thank you so much, Darren, for sending me this letter. And so I'm going to go ahead and pin this up on this wall of letters here. And so anyways, now let's move on to our project. Now our levitator is going to be based off of the properties of magnetism. That is, of course, when you have a magnet, things like metal and other magnets will go ahead and stick to it or not be stuck to it. Now it's practically impossible, though, to balance it in an in-between where the force of gravity would be pulling down on this object as much as this object is pulling up on that, so then it would be floating in midair. Since those limbo states forces are practically impossible, we're going to be building this in a slightly different way. The principle is going to be that if we make an electromagnet and turn it off and on very fast, it'll look like it's floating in midair. And this will especially work well if we're getting that frequency fast enough that the human eye won't even be able to tell any difference at all. Now even though we could have it vibrate up and down very fast, it'd be very hard to calculate it out for each object we wanted to levitate, as each object would have a force equivalent to their mass. However, if we can get something that'll detect when the object is at a certain height, it'll turn off the electromagnet, and then when it drops below that height to turn it back on, then it should oscillate extremely fast in that one given point. Basically here we'll be using an infrared diode, while over here is going to be an infrared phototransistor. And then up here is going to be our electromagnet will have it be so that the electromagnet will be turned on when the infrared receiver can see infrared light hitting it. However, if an object blocks the path of light that goes between them, it's going to shut off the electromagnet. And so really, it's going to be quite that simple. Here's the schematic that we're going to be using. As you can see, here's our infrared phototransistor, our infrared diode, and an electromagnet over here. Now in between, this is an op amp because it'll sort of act as a way to amplify the signal that's given off by this phototransistor. And then the output of that amplifier is going over to a MOSFET. A MOSFET is a type of field effect transistor. And so basically, if we apply electricity to the gate, it'll allow electricity to flow from the drain to the source, acting sort of like a switch. And this switch will then in turn turn off and on this electromagnet. To begin prototyping it out, we're going to insert this op amp into a breadboard. Now as you can see at the top of the op amp, there's a little divot. And so the pinout for this goes pin number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And as you can see on the schematic, I have it written out as which pins or which connections going into this box here that is the op amp. And so I'm just going to insert this op amp into the middle here. This way, each of the pins will be on their own distinct rows. And so to complete the circuit, we're just going to work our way through the schematic from left to right till we have everything connected up correctly. First, to help stabilize the 12 volt DC input going in, I'm going to add this 1000 microfarad capacitor between the positive and negative rail. Now, electrolytic capacitors like this are polarized, so this side is the negative and this side is the positive, and so insert it like that correctly. Next, we're going to insert a 180 ohm resistor into the positive rail. Now, since I don't have a 180 ohm resistor, I'm just going to be using this 200 ohm. But if it doesn't work that well, I'm going to probably change it out for a 150 ohm. And now, as you can see, the 180 ohm resistor needs to be connected up to the positive end of our IR diode. I have the pink wire as our positive and the black wire as our negative. If you need to tell the positive side from the negative side, when looking down on it, the negative side has a flat edge over here, while the positive side continues to be round. And so I just connected up the positive side to that resistor and the negative side going over to the negative rail. Next we have a 4.7 thousand ohm resistor connected up to pin 2 of the op amp. And so I'll just insert one side of that from the positive rail to pin 2 of the op amp. Now as you can see, also connected up to pin 2, we have our infrared phototransistor. These phototransistors look like this. Now there are some that look like this that already have the op amp built into them. However, I think they may be a little bit more tricky for fine tuning this, so I'm just going to be using this simple one. And so on this, the long side represents our emitter, while the short side represents our collector. On the schematic, this side is our emitter, and this side is our collector. And of course, that base is going to be activated by the infrared radiation hitting the LED. And thus, that'll open up the current to flow from the collector to the emitter. And so once again, I soldered some wire to this. This red side is our collector, while the black side is our emitter. And so that red side can be connected up to that same pin 2 row, while the black side, on the other hand, is going to be connected up to the negative rail. Next, as you can see, we need to connect up a 22,000 ohm resistor going to pin 3 on the op amp. Now, I don't actually have a 22,000 ohm resistor, so instead I took a 20,000 ohm resistor and a 2,000 ohm resistor and soldered them together. And so basically, those two resistor values just add up together to equal a total resistance of 22,000 ohms. And so we can insert that into the positive rail and then bring it over to pin 3. And then you can see I need one more 22,000 ohm resistor going from pin 3 also to ground. And so I'm just going to insert one more from pin 3 going over to the negative rail. Now on that same line, we need to connect up a 4.7 microfarad capacitor with the positive over here and the negative over here going to the ground rail. And so I'm just going to insert that right here and bring it on over to the negative or ground rail. As for this 5.6 thousand ohm resistor, we'll come back to that as it needs to be connected up to this electromagnet coil that we have yet to make. However, we can now connect a wire from pin 4 of the op amp going over to the negative rail. 
and then we can connect pin 6 to pin 5, and pin 5 gets connected to the negative rail as well. And then we can take a wire from pin 8 going over to the positive rail. In a moment we'll come back and do the rest of the circuitry, however first we should probably make the electromagnet coil. Now to make the electromagnetic coil, we're basically going to be coiling enameled copper wire around a piece of metal. To try and create a more powerful electromagnet, I'm going to be winding 26 gauge magnet wire around this bolt. However, an important thing to remember to do is that when you get to the top of winding, you should bring it down and then wind up again. Because if you wind back down in the opposite direction, it'll actually make it weaker. And so yeah, I'm going to go wind this for quite a while, and then I'm going to be back with you guys in a moment. Okay, and here's my electromagnet. So this has approximately 500 turns of the magnet wire wrapped around it. Now I did want to get somewhere around 1,200 turns, but I actually didn't end up having enough wire for that. So this will end up being less strong than it could have been. Also, be sure that when you're done, on the two ends of the magnet wire, go ahead and sand off the enamel coating so it'll be able to conduct. But anyways, now we need that 5.6 thousand ohm resistor going from pin 3 to an open rail over here where we'll connect the electromagnet. Since I don't have a resistor of that value, I'm just going to connect two in series again to approximate the value. And now we're going to use a regular diode like this. The negative end is going to connect to that 5.6 thousand ohm resistor, while the positive end is going to go to the positive rail. The reason we have that diode there is because when the electromagnet shuts off, it'll create a huge voltage spike. This is because just like how the flow of electrons through the wire creates a magnetic field, a collapsing magnetic field will create a huge voltage. However, by adding this diode, it does make the electricity have an easier path to follow, and this protects the rest of the components. And so anyways, now we can connect one end of our electromagnet to the positive rail, while the other end will go to that same rail that had the resistor and the diode. Anyways, now we need to add our MOSFET into the circuit. As you can see, this side is our gate, this is our drain, and this is our source. And on my MOSFET that I'm using, in most MOSFETs, it goes gate drain source. And so I'm going to plop that into the breadboard right here. And then I'll take a wire from pin 1 of our op amp, going over to the gate of the MOSFET. And then the drain of the MOSFET needs to be connected up to that same row with the diode and resistor. And finally, the source of the MOSFET just needs to be connected up to the negative rail. Now the last thing that I think improves the circuit is to put a tube over the IR sensor. This way it'll help block out some of the IR light that may be reflecting off of things and maybe messing up with the whole process here. And so I'm just using this small plastic tube I found. However, you could use something like a straw and then just color it black or something like that and it should work just as well. And so with that done, our circuit is now complete. Let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, I now have it all set up and as you can see, here's my infrared sensor. Now my infrared diode I just have over here since I didn't have anything else to hold it into place, so I'll just hold it into place with my hand during this first test. And as you can see with this, we can get a metal object to float in midair. Now as you can see, we couldn't get it to levitate that high. You see, I originally planned to wrap somewhere around 1,200 turns of copper wire around this bolt. However, it turned out that I only had enough wire for around 500 turns. And so if you wanted a better electromagnet, you could put more turns on it. However, another way you could do it is actually just apply more voltage through it. And of course, using something like a microwave oven transformer with the secondary coil removed, you can get a very strong electromagnet. However, for that, you would want this to have its own separate voltage going into it, and then just have a common ground with the other 12 volts supplying the rest of the circuit. This way you wouldn't have to worry about the increasing heat dissipation from all the resistors within the circuit. So yeah, that's probably what I'll plan to do in the future, since this is more of just a proof of concept project. However, now that we know that everything works, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up a bit and put it into an enclosure. Okay, and now I have it all complete. As you can see, I have the electromagnet, the infrared emitter, and the infrared sensor all inside of the chamber. And as you can see, all the circuitry has been added to the back. Now I did also add this potentiometer, that's just to adjust the sensitivity of the infrared sensor. But basically that potentiometer is in place of that 4.7 kilo ohm resistor we had. So yeah, let's go ahead and fire this thing up and give it a test run. And once we flip it on, all we need to do is stick the metal piece up into the beam. Now it can be a little bit tricky to find the right spot. And there we go. As you can see, I pushed it a little bit and it will just sit there spinning and spinning because there is so little resistance going against it. And now as you can see, just for fun, I put my channel logo on a piece of metal and it can just float inside of it. Okay, so now a few notes about this thing. After leaving it running for about five minutes, this coil is pretty hot. The circuitry on the back is pretty much fine, except for the MOSFET could probably use a heat sink, but it's not nearly as hot as the coil is. And so again, likely that problem would be solved if you used a better electromagnet, especially if you used the half a microwave oven transformer like I was saying earlier, to make a very strong electromagnet and it wouldn't be nearly as hot. And so yeah, you wouldn't really need to worry about overheating or anything. However, if you do do that, instead of the MOSFET I used, probably use something like an IRFP 260N or something like that. Just because those MOSFETs can handle quite a bit more current than these ones can. Second, if you guys build this and when you put stuff in it just vibrates up and down, then that means you should probably change the value of the capacitor we used. In this we originally used a 4.7 microfarad capacitor, but I went back and changed it for myself to a 2.2 microfarad capacitor because I thought it was a little bit more stable. And so depending on your situation, it'll probably range anywhere from around 2.2 microfarads to a maximum of 20 microfarads. So yeah, that's how you can stabilize it out if it's being a bit unruly for you. 
And then finally, guys, once again, this thing is pretty weak. It's more of just a little desktop toy, to be honest. However, like I said earlier, it is a good proof of concept, and I think I am going to make quite a bit of a bigger one in the future. So yeah, I think that should definitely be pretty fun. So now you know how to make your very own infrared electromagnetic levitator. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and or learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. And if you'd like to see my science videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so I'll show up in your subscription newsfeed. If you have an idea for a video you'd like to see me do in the future, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And so yeah guys, thank you all so much. Please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to be building a powerful electric arc glove.